Hey there everybody, welcome back to another Friday progress video and uh, up here in the loft with Weir Yard and the build is going along great so I thought I'd share with you some of the amazing stuff that I've been putting together and uh, I hope you'll have as much fun watching this as I have had building it and uh, hopefully maybe it'll uh, be a little bit of inspiration to your own build but uh, without further ado let's show you around and show you what I've been up to. It's another day up here in the loft in Weir Yard and this corner is where I've been working. So what you can see here is uh, the build-up of the ground cover. I'm just going to precariously balance over the loft hatch. So as you can see, woo! But um, I've been trying the Gage Master Puffer Bottle and I haven't really got on with it. I can see why a lot of people don't rate it. Um, it was very difficult to fill. Um, just couldn't get the stuff in. Uh, neatly, so I, I chose. I tried to fill it actually over the terrain, so anything that uh, that fell out uh, wasn't really wasted. But it just proved really difficult. So instead, I had to default back to some tried and trusted methods. Um, I shook down some sand into the wet paint, sprayed over with some very diluted PVA glue. I also tried ripping off some bits of this grass mat. Uh, and they're in there just dotted about. Once you know where they are you can see them but they, they blend in quite well um, and just built it up but that brown is proving very difficult to hide on the steeper bits so I'm going to have to have a ponder how to do that at the moment. It's making me think of uh, more North American uh, terrain, you know, a, a climate where it's a lot warmer where the uh, terrain has to cope with a lot hotter conditions. Um, but I'm going to keep building up on this. Um, I've got some uh, rocks and stuff I'm going to glue in. Uh, trees will go in, so it'll start to mute down. But that's where I'm up to. I've got to balance the track as well. I've got another area over here that I'm going to get to work on. And uh, I'm just going to disregard the, um, the puffer bottle from the outset on this. I'm not going to mess about. So coat with the brown paint, sprinkle in the sand, uh, just get a sort of a layer of sand for a texture for the earth and then spray down with the diluted PVA and then onto that just start working in all of the grass powders and uh, just scattering them by hand I found that's the best way to do it in all honesty with you. So I'm going to get on with that, I've got uh, plenty to do. Next stage just uh got the brown paint on then a little bit of that uh, grass mat ripped into pieces in uh, a variety of different places. I'm actually over here trying to put it where the slope's quite steep just to try and disguise that brown hatching that we're getting over there to a, a little bit. I've scattered some of the little rocks that came with the scenic starter kit as well and you can see there's some sand going on but the, the plaster that uh, was well, actually polyfiller kind of sucks the moisture out of the paint very very quickly uh, but you don't want to put too much water on otherwise it'll all go mushy again so uh, it's a bit of a compromise I'm now going to spray this with glue and uh, then I'll move on to the grass scatter we're not bothering with the uh, puffer bottle has actually in my opinion improved this a little bit it looks like rough scrubland almost like Cumbria actually I'm looking at the hillsides of Cumbria it's not supposed to be it's supposed to be the northeast of England somewhere uh, somewhere between Tyne and Tees but and that's all right. I've got to spray over a coat of hairspray just to fasten all of the scatter on there. You can see I think this this bit's turned out a bit better than over there. Uh, but I'm going to be planting a lot of trees now, and I'll see where I get to with that. So I think actually a lot of the trees are going to go up there, and I'm quite pleased with this. I might just get a pack of sheep or something just to have sheep grazing on this. Um, I think those little stones actually, they came out of the Gage Master Scenic Starter Kit. They actually work really well. You wouldn't have thought it to look at oh, a few a few graded rocks. Um, but actually, 
they do give a sense of real terrain. There's a real landscape going on there. And you can see the big chunks of the grass mat in position and blended in. They're not too bad, actually. So yeah, a thumbs up for the Gage Master Scenic Starter Kit. The puffer bottle was a disappointment, but all the other materials thus far, I think I've used everything apart from the like and the trees, and uh, there was some sort of undergrowth stuff, um, but uh, they all look fairly standard, so um, I've got good faith in those. But um, yeah, it's it's come together pretty well, and if I move back a little bit, you're starting to see that area look a lot different from how it was. It's easy to get carried away doing this and get really stuck in and before you know it you've done loads and forgotten to film anything. So what has gone on? Well you can see that uh, I've got the bridge abutments resting in there. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky to show you. It's just not really something that from most angles you're going to really see. So uh, again, woo. A uh, big drop there, but I'm going to try and show you what I've been doing around here. This is really hard. So somewhere in there you'll see the bridge abutments all squeezed in. That's actually really hard to uh, film. And I filled in behind with some more of that polyfillery stuff. And uh, just letting that set, the spirit level is actually wedging everything together. I've done some ballasting as well. You can see uh, the ballasting's all spread out. But what is going on over here? Well, the mountain is slowly growing out of offcuts of spare jab light. And uh, this is kind of where I really got carried away. And you can see on the front, um, just gluing random bits in to fill in the gaps. It's going to get covered in the J cloth and PVA mix. Uh, slowly build up, build up. And um, that's really what I'm working on. Now I don't have the tunnel portal for this end. The track there is fixed in, but no tunnel portal. So what's going to happen is that at this end, um, I'm going to have to leave a bit of a space for where the tunnel portal will all be built in. But uh, I'm going to try and do some of this other stuff here. Uh, just get all that in. Using scrap bits of wood, all sorts. I don't want it solid jab light uh, because that would be using a lot of jab light. Um, so you can see underneath there I've stuffed a bit of paper to the back just to hold things up. Uh, but um, all of this was ready glued together. It was an off cut from a project that a friend of mine was doing had left over. So it's just all coming together. Freestyle and when the J cloth goes over the top of all this it's going to look all right, actually, um, even if I say so myself. That's the plan. So I'm going to crack on some more. I've got a rock face around there that uh, still needs to be fastened in place. But it's really coming along nicely. So I hope you agree. You might not agree. Leave your comments in the uh, comment section below. Um, if you do agree, then um, do feel free to massage my ego. But uh, I'm going to get on, do a bit more. And then I'll show you what I've done. Well, this monstrosity here is the shell that will go underneath the uh, glue soap J cloths. Really, all it is is to uh, make sure that the J cloths kind of uh, keep their shape. And uh, just trying to get round here, you can see that they've got all the tunnels in place. And uh, yeah, you just got to kind of imagine things a little bit um, smoothed out some of the sharp edges use some of that tape as well so I'm going to get a load of J cloths together soak them in PVA and water mix and start covering this up so uh, also the other thing to do is make sure there's no rolling stock in there in case it kind of rains glue down into the tunnels so uh, that's what I'm going to do next I've finished making an unholy mess uh, J cloths soaked in uh, watered PVA glue, sort of a 50-50 mix. I think I may have put on a little bit too much PVA though because uh, I've currently got a J cloth down there soaking up what's dripping down and you can see the way it's run down and it's actually cleaned the ballast. Um, I will sort that out in due course but there was actually a pool and uh, if I look inside you can see on the top there a huge pool of PVA forming up 
Um, I suppose I'll just stick the track down. Hopefully it won't get too bad. Um, it is quite warm up here, so maybe it'll start to dry. This area here, I need to do something on. Uh, I need to get a single track tunnel portal for up here on the top. And uh, then all of this can be kind of finished off. Um, not really in any great hurry at the moment. Even though you may think, well, if you're not in a hurry, why are you going so fast? It's just one of those things. Um, I like to build stuff and uh, just sort of throw it together. Those ready rocks that I bought have uh, gone in around the edges just to give a sense of, I don't know, a bigger mountain. Um, once all of this is painted up, uh, well, it's got to have filler and painted and then uh, move on to the technique that I used over here, which I'm actually quite pleased with. I've also started doing a little bit of embankment just over there, just to use the last of the PVA up. Um, I stuffed in a load of brown packing paper underneath and then uh, a couple of layers of the J cloth over the top. And um, further along here, though, it has to be a retaining wall. That's going to be recycled out of the shed. So I'm waiting on next Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, when um, the thing that's being filmed in there is uh, going to be filmed in there so that I can then finally dismantle it. And wow, well, progress today has been quite epic. So uh, I don't know what I'll call this video. Maybe uh, amazing scenery comes together on large model railway. Zoe, take note. <laughs> what I've done this morning so far as I started to populate that hillside with some trees. Now these are mostly, all bar one, the trees that came in the Gage Master Scenic Starter Kit. So that's the trees that you get. I know a lot of people have been asking me about the Scenic Starter Kit. I did a bit of a review on when I first opened it. And um, I said at the time that I was quite confident that the trees would be pretty good. And I'm not being disappointed, actually. I know there's some people who go, oh, no, you can make trees from sea foam that look absolutely amazing. Yes, you can. I have seen them. Um, you can do that. But I'm making great pains to use what I have uh, before I start thinking about uh, adding in extras. So over there, that little hillside, I've decided to just populate with the trees I've got. And uh, actually, I'm pretty pleased with the result. I'm you know, quite happy with that. There's also one of the Scaledale Scenics trees just at the front, uh, that one there. I've moved that to the front because actually these are really quite good trees. Lots of individual pieces and um, really pleased with that as well. Uh, so having it at the foreground kind of brings attention to it, making it almost like, a, I suppose you could say, a scenic feature. So... Um, so yeah, uh, and what you can take away from this is, if you've got a mix of trees, use the more simple ones in the background to make up the numbers, and bring the better trees to the foreground uh, as uh, something that will draw the eye. Now what else have I been up to? Well, I've moved my spirit level, which was uh, just holding up a retaining wall there whilst the plaster set. Uh, that's all done, so that has been removed. And I've just uh, done a, a scenic layer on the bit of bare plaster that was there. Again, down here, just done this sort of splat of leftover plaster that was just a little bit of scenic area. That's all been done. And uh, J Cloth Mountain is still drying. That's going to take probably a week even to dry completely before it can get the coat of filler and uh, then the top coat so that, you know, this... Remember this, in a later video, it will start to look more like this. And a lot of people online have commented that I really do seem to have made some really good progress. And yes, I have. But what it does show is that actually a lot of these techniques are quick and simple. You don't have to spend months or even years handcrafting your telegraph poles. There are ways and means to really effectively make scenery quite quickly. Now other areas that I need to get some attention on, this over here, which is all scrunched up newspaper, uh, I've been told actually by my friend Les, said oh newspaper starts to smell a bit once you get it wet, so I might uh, take all that out, bin all that and uh, use something different just to fill in there. I've got some uh, ply scrap plywood formers in there as well, 
That's just going to be an embankment up to, well, I'm not really sure what's going to be on the top there. Again, a little bit of thought's going to have to go into that. Uh, and then I'm going to have to do along all of these purlins. Uh, all of these need some kind of scenic embankment. Uh, so I've got to have a think about that. Probably quite easy with J cloth, a bit of scrap jab light underneath just to get a sense of texture. Uh, I've got loads of offcuts downstairs which I can use, and uh, it will it will slowly progress. Um, over here, there's also been some ballasting of the outermost tracks. So I talked a bit about that before, and a lot of that is down to the fact that stupid, stupid me forgot whilst rushing away with the scenery in the foreground that you still have to access the stuff behind to finish it all off. So that was really a concerted effort before I do anything more on the foreground to try and get things sorted. So I ballasted the track all the way around to there. Um, I need to do the embankment at the back. This will probably be the first one to get done. Um, so maybe even crack on with that today. It's really difficult to get access over there, I have to say. Major boo-boo, um, not really working from the back towards the foreground. Um, That'll teach me for being far too excited to get this turntable area done. And then that corner over there is really hard to access. But I do have some bits and pieces that I want to put there. I got a Hornby, uh, I think it's a Scaledale, where's it gone? Somewhere in the sprawling mess, there we go. Uh, Hornby Scaledale goods shed, uh, the granite station goods shed. Actually looks really nice. Um, I saw one of these on another project I've been working on. So I had some royalty money come through from the US for uh, um, you know, my writing side of things. Incidentally, my books are still available. Really good books. Uh, available from Amazon and all the usual places. Blah, 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 blah. But um, certainly some royalties came through and I was able to pick that up. And uh, I'm looking forward to planting that over in the corner there and kind of build some of the recycled buildings as well out of the shed into a sort of slightly industrial area over in that corner and it's a great opportunity to recycle. I do like reusing stuff from elsewhere. Keeping costs down, yes, but I just don't like stuff to just get thrown away. So um, that area will be recycle central as will that corner right over there. Um, I'm not really looking forward to doing that but there's a lot less in the foreground to get in the way so I just move all of those wagons to get access and that corner over there will get built up before I start building forward through all of these areas here. So yeah let's get to it. Uh, like I said progress is not going to be quite so rapid today. Um, you know not really resting on my laurels it's just that uh, some days you appear to make some massive progress other days not. It's just one of those things, it's how railway modelling works. And really at the moment hampered a lot just by having to wait for all this to dry. And it won't be dry today, won't even be dry probably by Sunday by the weekend. I'm filming this on a Friday, a, yeah Friday. So that'll take quite some time to dry out. And then it's got to have the layer of filler on. That'll take a few days to dry out as well. So as you can appreciate, progress will appear to slow down for a bit. Anyway, I'm going to crack on. Well, this was an epic build. Um, as you can see, issues of access. That's my fault. But I've managed to get the PVA soap J cloth over some offcuts of jab light right to the back there. That was really hard, really, really hard. And uh, actually, you see some dirty marks there because it turns out that purlin still covered with nearly 100 years worth of soot. I uh, didn't get it all off. Uh, when I built everything. Currently it's a little bit see-through, not a problem. It'll dry and get painted. I probably won't even be able to fill that because quite simply access is atrocious. The way I did it is some scrap off cuts of wood to um, spread the weight and I, I literally had to crawl over all this. Although one good thing is that all this ballast um, and the PVA that's been used has actually strengthened the baseboards quite dramatically. Um, it is quite impressive uh, how little they flexed and there's no creaking or crunching sounds which is always good. So I'm just going to leave all that to dry now. I'm really out of breath, really hot and sweaty because uh, that 
was not an easy job to do and uh, trying to lie almost flat but without putting too much weight on everything I even took the uh, uh, deck on the turntable out just to avoid that getting damaged but the job's done now I'll give it uh, a few days to dry off and then uh, we'll see if we can make that look a bit more presentable Back up here in the loft another day, watching a classic Grand Prix, getting back to uh, going through some of these. I think that's Bahrain, somewhere like 2014, possibly. Anyway, that's not what you're here for. What you are here for is to see we've got the trees up over there. The Land Rover appeared. Doctor Who is in the hillside, probably going hiking with Jamie. But over here, the mountain has... Uh, just received its top coat of uh, scenicery stuff so it's all still very wet and it may need another brush over in places but uh, blended in three different scatters plus sand plus some little rocks um, and uh, all of that over the household paint still got some bits of that grass mat going on and uh, believe me it looks better in person that's the thing I'm noticing right down there that's going to be a cliff face and still waiting for a tunnel mouth, so that's why there's a huge gaping hole there which looks very peculiar. So just waiting on getting a tunnel mouth to uh, fix in there. But round this side we've got some ballasting. I just need to do that bit of embankment as well actually, that'd probably be the next task. And you can see the tunnel mouths are all sort of starting to get blended in. There's still a bit of wet glue and stuff, but we are getting there. So, um... Actually, I might leave that piece of embankment because there's going to be another little bit here when the retaining wall goes in. So I'm going to leave that be. And the next job is to get this bridge shaped up. Now you can see the line on top. And the way I did this was I just held a permanent marker next to the bit of a Mark 1 coach that had the most overhang. And then effectively pushed the coach round, which then drew a line, which is the maximum... Uh, space that uh, a Mark 1 coach will need going around there for clearance and I did the same by placing it on one of the ends of the same Mark 1 coach around the back and then that draws out effectively the path that must be clear of any obstructions so I will cut that piece of wood now so that I can uh, get the the girder pieces on there and it, I've decided rather than being trying to have a straight girder section all the way across I just simply can't do that so I'm going to be uh, cranking it round. Uh, there won't actually be supports underneath because there is no clearance but hopefully the eye won't notice that too much. Well actually you will because I've just told you but um, that's the plan and there's actually the only piece of set track so far on the entire layout is a, I think it's a first radius curve, so it does look very tight when a train goes round there, but uh, needs must when you have to compromise. So uh, I'm going to get on with that. But uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with this hillside. When it dries, it might look even better. I'm hoping it will come out as well as this down here, because I'm really quite pleased with this. And part of my plan is there's going to be some trees as well going on. But I also quite like the idea of having some kind of obelisk up there near the top. Um, sort of, uh, sometimes you see these on big hills. It's almost like a, not so much a cairn, but there'll be a, a stone thing uh, that um, I'm not really sure what they're usually for. But uh, I think it might be nice having that up there. And some hikers as well might be good too. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments what you think and also love to hear about how your builds are going. Back up here on Weir Yard and uh, what I'm actually doing at the moment um, is this area over here. I've done a lot of salvaging from the shed so you may or may not recognise the slightly cut up remains of the actual bridge that uh, the station building sat on. Station building's been removed, um, it's been cut about a bit to enable me to have a bit there, which was actually that corner there. And that's actually glued in over the jab light. And the reason for this is I want a fairly flat base that I can then add buildings like the original station building and a few others. And there's going to be 
uh, a sort of a, a scene of buildings up there, just you know, possibly to use them up, but also because I think it'll look nice rather than just acres and acres of countryside. You can also see over there, test fitting some of the retaining walls. It's been trimmed down to the right height. Need some distance pieces putting in and some trimming on the end there as well. So it all sort of come down to allow that embankment to do its thing. But the method I'm using over here is more of a papier mache method. Uh, I just thought for a change and just so I could see how it compared to the J cloth method. And actually what I found is using the spray bottle there with a, a fairly weaker PVA and water mix, you can sort of spray it over, the paper gets a bit heavier, and then you stick the next dry sheet cut up on top and then spray it. And that way you're not dealing with um, messy paper. The paper that you actually put on is just as is from, uh, in this case, newspaper. Uh, I know some people say, oh, it starts to smell when it dries, uh, but it will get sealed with filler, and I see a lot of people have used it with great success. So I'm going to see how it goes. Um, I've still got a fair amount to do. I'm going to build up a reasonably thick layer because uh, it doesn't have the inherent strength that the J-cloths do. So um, I'm going to crack on with this and see where I get to. I'm going to call it a night at this. As you can see, the retaining wall's in. I've also got the last little bit of embankment J cloth with PVA, got to let that dry, a little bit of filler, and then uh, all of that can be overpainted. Once that's done, that bit of ballast, that bit of ballast will be done. Got some signals in, salvaged from uh, Trinity Road. And then over here, again, tunnel mouth salvaged from Trinity Road. Had to do some major surgery, actually, to get it to fit. Um, doesn't really do it justice on the camera. Done the J cloth and PVA. I'm going to start to um, uh, do a filler layer over that and then grass and stuff and hopefully make that little kink look like they meant it to be like that. Um, unfortunately, it's just one of those things. Um, it's proven to be incredibly difficult to uh, fit everything in uh, in the space. So uh, I'll probably have some kind of creeper or bush growing over the top just to disguise that joint is probably the best way to do it. And... Uh, on the side we've got the wing wall I've managed to cut, shut, fold it round and uh, hopefully that will look uh, a little bit more plausible. So that area is kind of coming together and uh, yeah, uh, that bridge still needs some work. I actually ran out of track pins pinning this wall in. You kind of have to do that sometimes. So I can't pin the girders on the other side. They are knocking about here somewhere. Somewhere down there, yeah, on the floor, just around here, just lying around. It's turned back into a tip, actually. I'll tidy it up up here. But then I've got other bits and pieces waiting for a bit of work. This water tower, um, I've got to cut out in the roof. And then I've, I've got to basically cut the building, unfold it, so it will go around this at the bottom. That's my plan. And you can see uh, Weir Yard number two signal box has turned up. Uh, the number one hasn't. Uh, I need to do some work to get that off the layout out in the shed. And then uh, Brian, who you may remember from some of the live streams, has I did a swap with him for the old Orlando Street Bridge and uh, a favour to ballast his uh, track for him. Uh, I'm not too bothered about ballasting, actually. I, I don't mind doing it. So that building's just roughly placed there. So uh, again, the goods shed next to it, roughly placed. Those two are going to be filling in in that corner. Uh, maybe get some low relief buildings. I'm not really sure. I've got some retaining walls to go along this back there. Uh, also, I need to salvage some track from outside in the shed. And then we're really motoring, I guess. Uh, but that's where I'm up to. Now, um, oh, I'm shattered. It's getting a bit late. So back to work tomorrow. So uh, give it all plenty of time to dry. So I'm back up here in the loft at Weir Yard and I've been doing an awful lot actually. So uh, I'm going to crack straight on and uh, show you this bridge is now in, ballasted and uh, glued and uh, ballast is still wet but starting to um, come together on this uh, upper raised section. And this uh, retaining walls in, uh, some signals, I think I showed you those last time. 
but this embankment now is uh, decorated got a uh, random tree has uh, sprung up there and uh, there's another one to match it I need to salvage from the shed but then I've also been at work round here and uh, the tunnel portal is uh, starting to bed in to the landscape I'm just going to try and get a better view and uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced about that kink where I've had to cut it and kink it so um, again I'm going to have to I think a bush a bush when in doubt um, stick a bush in uh, but also over here I've uh, just got a, a top layer onto I tried a papier mache approach didn't really work um, as well as I'd hoped so I've had to go back over with the J cloths and PVA um, I did try with the polyfiller but it's just taking far too long so uh, hopefully this area over here will be the next area to uh, get some uh, scenic work done and then I can uh, ballast all of these tracks down here as well. I want to salvage some signal gantries that I've got and some other signalling from the shed and uh, they're going to get planted around here. Uh, I've decided not to put anything where it's going to get knocked or karate chopped over there so uh, in terms of signalling I'm going to try and steer clear of having any over there. Um, I've also got some work to do in that far corner right over there and uh, I know I'm a, a big advocate of not using this stuff but I've got a can of handheld expanding foam which I'm pretty tempted to use over there and you know do as I say not as I do. The reason for this is there's a bit of a draft coming from that corner as well and um, it was always difficult access and I think, you know, um, it might work better if I fill, not all of it, but just the far back of it with the expanding foam, sort out the draft, and uh, I can sort of sculpt it into um, a hillside or something. I'm not really quite sure. Even just a back scene painted blue, I really don't know. But uh, certainly I'm going to experiment with that over there. Uh, I know I'm a big advocate for not using that for scenic work, but, uh, you know, um, I do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> um, what else have I got to do? Not really um, an awful lot that I can see here. This is the old station building out from the shed. Um, it's basically station building for Bolton Trinity Road. Always said I was very proud of this building. So that is going up there on that plinth, which incidentally is made out of what's left of the station bridge. So it's all coming together. I've got to be careful actually, the thought does occur to me that if I build all this far too quick then um, I'm not going to have anything to do. Maybe I'll get bored of it up here and I'll be like, nah, I can't be bothered anymore. No, it's, uh, there's a lot of scope up here for trains running by. So uh, now that I've got the scenic stuff to a point where I've got a section where I can show trains going by, how's about a brief interlude of trains running on Weir Yard?
got back here another day and as you can probably see already there's quite a bit gone in in this area and you might recognize some of the buildings and even the retaining walls and actually that is pure trinity road just transplanted across we've got the uh, what used to be bolton east junction signal box has found a new home as Weir Yard number one or number three, I can never remember which way the numbering system goes, um, along with its little lamp hut and a grounded van body which came from elsewhere on Trinity Road. The boiler house is now on its third layout. Um, Trinity Road was actually its second, so um, that's quite a, a veteran of different layouts. And then uh, also got a little uh, shed there and they will represent, I guess, a uh, water softening plant uh, apparatus for former uh, water troughs, which I'm not going to model, but uh, that's my uh, indication of what those would have been. And then the retaining wall at the back, uh, that was where the uh, Blackburn line branched away at Bolton West Junction and uh, that's found a new home there with uh, the same Backman Seamcraft building sat on top. Um, there are a few more buildings to think about going up there, but I want to wait for the glue to dry before I try and force things in because the space has become a little bit more limited. So I don't want it to pop that retaining wall off the back before the glue has dried. So I'm just going to leave that be for now. In terms of the ballasting, uh, I will put a, a dirty wash over some of this cleaner ballast, which was some of the earlier ballast I did. I had a lot of problems with the deluxe material speed bond glue, and it just didn't work out. It's actually turned my track green in places, as you can see on the scissors crossing, so a bit disappointed with all of that. There is a bit more to do. I've still got um, a final little bit here of the embankment to do. I should probably cut off that little corner there of the upper layer. Um, so easy enough stuff to do. Uh, moving further round, this bridge has come together quite well, uh, ballasted. That ballast is probably still a bit wet, so I'm not going to poke and prod it too much. But uh, I've got the embankment at the back there all in. Retaining wall, um, and I think as I said on the last bit of video that I filmed, all of this is now being done, which kind of, I wouldn't say finishes this area off, but makes it uh, very presentable. I've got a few of the trees from Trinity Road have found new homes in here, as have the horses, and um, that's all looking quite good. Uh, I've still got uh, some bushes to just hide that little cut in that tunnel mouth. Around here, again, that's all still drying. There's some signal equipment um, just test fitted there, the gantry. Instead of just straddling two tracks, it now straddles three and signals a fourth. So actually, that's uh, become quite a useful piece of kit. Um, I'm not sure just how dry all of this stuff is. Um, nearly there, actually. Uh, I think, you know, you can see there's some give in it. Not decided yet whether it's going to get a coat of filler or whether I'm going to actually just experiment whether I can just do the terrain straight over the top there. Um, but uh, this whole area here can then get ballasted. Now that I've salvaged that signal gantry, there's nothing really stopping me from ballasting all of this area once this hillside or this embankment side, cutting side even, has been done. Um, in terms of other areas, um, what I'm going to look into now is this area over here in this corner. I've got to do all of this. Again, I'm going to just try painting straight over the J-cloth with the PVA. That's actually had uh, over a week to dry, so that should be rock solid. Um, but access, as I've said in previous videos, is really difficult. But I've been out and I've salvaged some track. So the um, next question is whether I make that yard... Um, sit purely scenic or whether I actually make it able to uh, have uh, locomotives shunt into there. I'm not entirely sure to be honest with you. Um, I haven't decided. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to shunt stuff into there. It's whether I want to make it shuntable. Uh, I mean I can back stuff in with reach wagons, not a problem. So maybe keep it like that and it will give it a home for some DC locomotives, which can, I suppose, be stored on sidings and there. I don't know. I haven't really thought too long and hard about it. 
access is really difficult so obviously cutting holes for point motors is going to be hard it's going to be at least one in the double slip to match up with this one so they'll switch as a pair as to whether there'll be any other points in there i really don't know i've got a gantry crane which probably needs to go in that area if it's going anywhere at all uh, again it's all just i'm making this up as i go along and then i've got a retaining wall which i need to build which is going to go across here to match up with this i've got to do this area that is now stopping me from doing a lot of stuff as well i've got all the bridges it's just a case of building them in building in the the sort of stream bed so um a lot of thoughts got to go into that area i guess but that's where i'm up to uh, i think i'm going to crack on now get some work done test fitting track over there i'll see what point motors i've actually got um and then we'll see about whether i do the type of point motors that attach directly underneath the uh turnout or whether i want the ones the pl10e with the extended pins that i just drill a hole in um i do have both available um there's a lot more to be salvaged from the shed and i think most of them may be pl10es so i'm gonna have to uh, investigate all of that but that's where i'm up to pretty much one of the other things I'd always been planning on doing is uh, fitting that salvaged water tank around this uh, sort of wooden bit. It's been tricky, I had to cut the whole kit down one side very carefully at the join and then the roof as well has been really difficult to do and uh, it keeps springing so just got to keep an eye on that but that hopefully just to draws the eye away from the base of that it's a bit weird having this huge piece of wood coming out of the top of the water tower but uh, no I think that's going to be all right it's just uh, a little something to draw the eye away from uh, the structure passing through the layout another day up in the loft and that's all dried out nicely test fitting the buildings up there but I've decided to try and uh, work a little bit on this area so repurposing some uh, retaining walls that uh, came from uh, out on Trinity Road. Uh, took a lot of measuring and cutting. So uh, that's now got in there. And that signal kind of gives away where this was. This was on platform five uh, down the back of the station. And uh, that was the platform five starter signal. Uh, it now signals theoretically down into this hidden area. I just left it be hopefully there's enough clearances for things to get past there's a little bit of card wall retaining wall gone in there i've checked clearances and that buttress is fine i've now got to consider what i'm doing with regards to getting the uh, um, uh, bridge girders in i've kind of got this uh, in mind but uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on that, maybe extend it as well. It's not quite long enough. And that's the plan. So I'm going to crack on. And uh, at least this ramp does actually now look more like a ramp rather than some rang shackle affair made out of whatever bits of wood that were to hand. Back up here in the loft. It's another day. It's quite warm, actually. It's been a really hot day. But um, finally got the top section track laid all the way round. it's really what i've been concentrating on at the moment so uh, you can see here the line comes through that's the point that uh, i've got to put a triangular piece in here just to extend the baseboard a bit like uh, what i've done over here but uh, a little bit bigger um, that's not really a big issue to be honest with you and uh, i've got that link through there this was actually the toughest point uh, because that's actually quite a steep curve on both of those and to get them to line up has proved very very difficult but I've got it done and you can see as well the retaining walls the track laid on top uh, this little uh, bridge area here just to kind of neaten up where this track dives under uh, these are going to be embankments on the side same for the other side I'm going to use the shaper sheet the woodland scenic shaper sheet to uh, do all of that then the track's up and it meets up with the tunnel mouth and back round. So this is the first test run. So I've got a um, mostly van train there and uh, a 25. And uh, I've already got it uh, dialed up. 
So I'm going to get the, um, let's have a look, need a little bit of speed, that should do it. And let's see it go around, this is the first time I've run track number four. It's been a state of partial built for quite some time. That seems to be getting around there okay, that was one of the problem areas. I have every faith in the Woodland Scenics uh, rises there, so this bit I wasn't actually worried at all about. Through the tunnel. Out the other end. Along the back retaining wall, and then over this bridge that uh, I finally finished putting together. And I've put a little piece there just because I don't trust these things to not try and dive down the loft hatch, so that needs painting. And then we're back to where we started. Well, I do hope that's been informative to you. Don't forget to like this video, share it too, and thanks again for taking the time to come and see what I've been up to here in Weir Yard up in the loft. And I hope you'll agree that uh, it's getting quite fun actually. And I'm really liking this uh, fourth track as the train trundles past me uh, just there um, because it doesn't follow the same route as the other three tracks and that makes it quite aesthetically pleasing um, and it just adds added interest. It is quite a little bit of a torturous route. Um, I think I'm going to have to pick very carefully what can get round here. I did try and check the clearances to get coaches round and uh, use a class 44 just for clearance work. Uh, not that I would be running either of those on this top layer. But um, if you plan for the most awkward of your rolling stock, then everything else that you do plan on running will invariably run quite well. So I'm really, really pleased with uh, what I've got together up here. But um, it's been nice to have you along for today. Don't forget, we've got more videos coming up. Live chat is 7pm British summertime at the moment. BST, which is GMT plus one. Always good to have your company there. And just shooting the breeze on the Jenny Monday Club. And uh, also don't forget we've got our Wednesday videos and Friday videos always update here in the loft. And in the meantime, don't forget you can also pick up copies of my books. Uh, they're available through Amazon, Waterstones, uh, even direct from the publisher too. So don't forget to check those out. It's very much appreciated and it's a good way that you can help support the channel. Uh, but until next time, you take really good care of yourself. It's me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And a huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns and Offshore Allen. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks, and catch you later.